So for today's video, I'm going to be discussing the CWL New Orleans pool draw that happened yesterday. Um, I was out most of yesterday skiing and um, just doing other things, which is why, if you can probably tell, my voice is a little bit raspy, a little bit um, drawn back, but I needed to get this video out here in a timely manner, so here I am anyway. Uh, but I'll start with pool A and what I think. Um, so of course, just to go through all the pools, uh, we have Team Caliber, who is first in pro points in North America, FaZe, who is fifth in pro points in North America, Unilad, who is fourth in pro points in EU, and Mindfreak, who is the uh, APAC region representative in pools. Uh, and then in pool B, we have Optic Gaming, second pro points, Team Envious, sixth pro points, uh, Vitality, uh, where are they? Third in pro points in EU, and then Epsilon fifth in pro points in EU. Uh, pool C is Luminosity, third in pro points NA, Red Reserve, second pro points EU, Rise Nation, seventh pro points NA, and E6, uh, who is the tenth and last seed uh, in pro points for North America. And then finally, in Pool D, we have Splice, number one EU, E United, fourth NA, Echo Fox, 8th NA, and Ground Zero, 9th NA. So, again, to start with Pool A, um, I think this one is pretty self-explanatory as to who's going to come out. Uh, TK is still one of the strongest teams in the game, of course. They are still probably a top two team in the game um, in in many cases most people would probably say that they are the best team in the game and that's i think a fairly reasonable argument of course i mean i personally uh if you've seen my other videos you know that i still have optic as the number one team uh in call of duty right now and obviously that just comes down to their 2k performances and the consistency they've had with this roster over the past you know three titles um since halfway through advanced warfare so um but to try to get back on topic, uh, Team Caliber, of course, like I said, they are a top three team or top two team, maybe top one team, depending on how you look at it. And they should go through this group probably 3-0, maybe lose to phase, but I don't really see a way in which they do. Um, so I'm going to take TK at the top of Pool A uh, with a 4-0, um, excuse me, because of course they'll also play the open bracket team. Um, and then... Second is still pretty easy for me. Uh, I think FaZe Clan is kind of a couple steps ahead of Unilad and Mind Freak. And so I would probably put FaZe Clan in second. They'll go 3-1 and one probably. Only lose to TK, beat the other three teams in the pools. Um, and of course this all will change maybe depending on <clears throat> excuse me who the uh, other open bracket team is. Because... You know, sometimes we see open bracket teams, they come out of open, they are red hot, and um, they can pull off upsets. We saw it uh, at Dallas with Echo Fox, who just came rolling out of pools. They, you know, steamroll all the way to to second place in Pool A, um, beating Envy and, and the other two teams in there, and then, of course, uh, losing to Optic. But Echo Fox... Uh, did it before and there's no reason to say that one of these teams fighting for a pro league spot won't have the the drive and the fire and the the momentum to carry them through a pool um i don't think it's going to be this pool though again i still think phase is, is second probably going three and one and then after that unilad and mind freaks kind of a toss-up to me uh, but i'm actually going to take mind freak in third i think they'll they could probably beat unilad you know go what two and two uh, they would beat unilad beat the open bracket team lose to the other two but if it's a good na open bracket team then uh easily this could be um open bracket team third uh mind freak fourth and then unilad fifth um but i do want to give some credit to unilad i think unilad could easily finish uh fourth in this pool i mean they could easily beat mind freak and then again depending on the open bracket team they could finish third even um but overall i'd say uh, TK, FaZe, um, Mind Freak, and then Unilad. And then, of course, if the NA, you know, depending on what open bracket team it is, um, most likely it's going to be a top NA open bracket team, 
like ghost or something like that. And if, you know, if it's ghost, for example, um, or lightning pandas or the allegiance team, that's now what is a GGEA, I think is what they're competing under. Um, you know, any of those three teams, then I would take all three of those teams over mind freak and Unilad. But, um, until we know what open bracket team is, I'm just going to go based on the four that I can see in front of me. So, uh, you know, I'd put Mind Freak third and Unilad fourth. And then moving on to Pool B, we have Optic Gaming, Team Envious, Vitality, and Epsilon. And I mean, this one's pretty easy for me. I think Optic is the best team in the game still. Uh, so obviously, I'm going to put them number one in the pools. Um, probably 4 0. I don't see a way in which they lose to any of these teams unless Envy. Um, somehow gets it together finally at this LAN and, and plays to kind of the level that we expected them to play at when this game came out. Um, but I don't see a real way in which that happens. So I'm going to take Optic first for now. Um, and then Team Envious, I'm going to take second. And um, I don't know, it's weird for Envy because they are kind of in a situation where they have shown no real promise uh, with this roster like they had in Advanced Warfare under Denial. Um, but I still think they they have some room to grow, obviously, and I still think that they can reach that full potential. Um, it may involve a roster move to to, re to get Envy back to the top. I'm not sure yet. Um, and one thing I've thought about a lot is that there may be some potential that if E6 doesn't make it, for example, that this team could drop like Classic for Dashy or something, get them a lot of AR slaying, and then you've got two of the top five ARs in the game, uh, arguably in Slasher and Dashy, to work with Temp and Huke who can just run subs and, and try to be you know more objective-minded. I think that's certainly like a possibility, but I'm going to kind of leave things like that out. Um, and probably for another video after this this weekend, or excuse me, not this weekend, but after this event is is, is over. Um, but anyway, back to the topic at hand. Uh, Team Envious, I would put them at second, probably three and one. They'll lose to Optic, beat the other three. Um, Vitality and Epsilon, I mean, this game's really a toss-up for me. Uh, I'd probably take Vitality over Epsilon just based on the fact that they uh, have seemed to be a little bit more consistent. Uh, against EU competition, and they are currently uh, third in pro points versus Epsilon, who is in fifth. Um, but, you know, there is always the factor that Epsilon could play a little bit harder, uh, really be going hard this event to make sure they uh, get their pro league spot because, of course, like I said, <clears throat> they are in fifth. And, uh, you know, if they have a bad event, they could be out of pro league. So um, it'll be very interesting to see what happens uh with them you know this event just like cwl dallas last year for infinite warfare it's going to be very crazy because there's going to be so many teams that are like on the cusp of you know getting into pro league and um i hope it's a lot like last year when we have you know last year we had evil geniuses and gosu crew literally playing for a spot in the pro league um i hope we get something very similar to that that would be uh, a really exciting kind of tiebreaker um tiebreaker kind of rule or uh or situation so moving on to pool c we have luminosity red reserve rise nation and e6 um you know i think this is a really good group i mean pool d is obviously like the group of death just based on how it looks but pool c um probably the most competitive group i would say and the only reason i say that is because i think these four teams, all four of them could literally beat each other, um, in my opinion, apart from maybe Luminosity losing to E6. I think Luminosity has a pretty secure chance to beat E6. Um, but for prediction's sake, uh, I would put Luminosity first, Rise Nation second, uh, Red Reserve third, and then E6 fourth. And Again, like Pool A, like Pool B, like Pool C, and Pool D, of course, um, it's going to be kind of dependent on the open bracket teams that come through here. I mean, again, if there's like a really good open bracket team that gets into this group, you could see uh, a pool team really shaking things up, which of course is is very scary for Enigma 6 because they are 10th in this, you know, in pro points, and they really can't afford to have a bad tournament because it will ultimately lead to them not finishing in pool play or excuse me in pro league um and 
you know, ultimately keep them out of season one. So, you know, again, I think it's going to be luminosity, rise, red, reserve, and then E6. And I mean, rise definitely could pull off an upset against luminosity. Red reserve could easily beat rise and E6. Um, I think luminosity is kind of the, the top of the spear for this group. Um, which I don't think is any sort of bold prediction by any means. I mean, I think they, you know, they are the team that got this group because they are third in pro points in NA. Um, so they will definitely um, have their work come out for them a little bit. But overall, I think Luminosity Shill still should finish uh, first in this group. And then moving on to the final pool, Pool D. Of course, the group of death for this event. Uh, which many people have called, and I think they're spot on with with their kind of uh, with their uh, with their with their call. Um, Splice and E United and Echo Fox and Ground Zero. So you look at Ground Zero; they have a new roster of Parasite, Study, Felony, and Nagafen. Of course, Echo Fox also made a team change. They dropped Gunless, picked up Aqua. Well, it it was a trade with Rise Nation; they didn't drop him, but you know what I mean. They got Aqua. <clears throat> and got rid of gunless so not really a new roster to the same sense as ground zero um and then united they've kept the same roster splice of course they kept the same roster they you know those two teams had no reason to change um i'm thinking I, i'm trying to think of how i think this pool will go i mean i think splice is probably first again uh spice splice seems to be uh, one of the top three teams in the game with Optic and TK based on last event um, and just based on how everything has looked overall, in my opinion, throughout this title. Um, so I would still put Splice at the top. Do I think they could lose to e United? Yes. Do I think they could lose to Echo Fox or Ground Zero? I'm going to say it's highly unlikely. Like, if Echo Fox, I'm going to give Echo Fox and Ground Zero maybe like a like a 7% chance to win or something, you know, like the odds certainly aren't in their favor by any step, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't know. They could do it. I think they could do it, but I think that's putting a lot of stock, uh, in those two teams. And honestly, I think splice is, is really the team to beat in this pool still. And then for E United, um, you know, I've covered them a lot. I've talked about the inconsistencies. I'm not going to go through all of that again. Um, United, I think they have the potential to beat Splice, but also the potential to lose to Echo Fox and Ground Zero if things don't go their way. Um, and that's really scary when you're a team like that, when you, you know, your inconsistencies really show constantly. Um, I think that can really hurt you, uh, but I'm hoping that it doesn't hurt them in the event. Uh, obviously, they're they're secured for for. Pro League, I'm pretty sure it's official that they're secured. I don't know if there's a way that if they get like T24 and something happens, like they could end up not making it. But I'm going to say that mathematically, I'm not sure if they're secured, but they are secure. Uh, they should not, by any stretch of the imagination, bomb out of this event. They should be fine. Um, and in my predictions, I'm going to say Splice 1. I think that's the easiest way to go. And then I'm going to say uh, Echo Fox 2, E United 3, and Ground Zero 4. Um, and the only reason I say that is obviously, again, I just talked about, I think e United's really good, but I think Echo Fox, one thing they really struggled at was Hardpoint. And, uh, you know, Hardpoint and SND, they kind of struggled at in Dallas. I think Aqua is a great pickup for this team um, as far as kind of just how all the rules work on this team and how um, they're just going to allow him to basically do what he does best, which is kind of be like uh, a sort of aggressive sub player, but with some kind of like sneaky sense to it. I, I, you know, he's kind of like a lurker in CSGO in a way, but like he does it in respawn. So it's, it's kind of weird, not quite like a Zuma flank type thing, but almost similar to that in a way where he's just constantly pushing out different angles. Uh, you know, he'll never go to like the same place twice, things like that. Just, just being aggressive um, and not really, 
you know, thinking about what he's doing um, or, you know, taking the time to be well thought out. He's just, you know, spawning. I'm pushing this. Here I come. If I get a kill, I'm going to get a kill. If not, I'm going to spawn somewhere else and then I'm going to push that angle. And, you know, things like that. Just being a naturally aggressive sub player um, who's constantly looking for flanks, looking for, for sneaky ways to, to try to break hill for his team in hardpoint. And then S and D, obviously he's just one of the better S and D players, um, in all of call of duty. I mean, we've seen it over the past three years. He's, he's been electrifying, uh, in S and D in all of the games and all of the titles. So I'm going to take echo Fox second. I'm going to take United third, like I said, and then I'll take ground zero fourth. Um, and ground zero is in the same boat as E six. That's, you know, getting fourth is a very scary proposition for them because they are ninth in pro points and there are a lot of teams that are trying to catch them. Uh, if I can real quick, let me tell you how close some of these teams are in pro points. So, um, so Ricky's team, well, this is actually, I don't think this is updated. This still has blasts on blast on Ricky's team. So I'll have to kind of ignore that. Um, but lightning pandas is at 31,000. Ghost is at 31,000. Uh, Evil Geniuses is at 30,000. The former Allegiance team is at 28,000. And that's kind of like the five through um, 11 or whatever. Uh, and then there's, of course, there's like a, a bit of a drop off after that. So I, I won't really worry about those teams, but Evil Geniuses could have a good event and catch them. Ghost Gaming can have a good event and catch them. Lightning Pandas obviously is very, very close. They could have a good event and catch them. Uh, I mean, there is a little bit of a gap there. Uh, there's there's about a five or six thousand point gap um, between the team that's in tenth and the teams below them. Uh, outside of the Ricky team, which is going to be very close. I mean, before the trade with Blast, uh, let me see if I can. So, yeah, they're they're going to be about two thousand points down. Uh, this page that I'm looking at on COD GamePD isn't updated right now with the newest rosters, but based on what I can see here, I mean, if E6 or Ground Zero slip up in any way, and you know underperform in any degree, that Ricky, you know, Ricky's team of Ricky, Bevels, Pharaoh, and Decimate, they will catch one of these teams. If they have a decent performance and they're hot coming out of open same thing with lightning panda same thing with ghost same thing with eg um and and you know same thing with allegiance but allegiance and evil geniuses uh they're gonna have to have really good events i mean even if those two teams underperform uh even if ground zero and e6 underperform allegiance and evil geniuses will still have to perform very well to to get into pro league for allegiance case i don't think that's possible I don't see a way in which Allegiance gets into Pro League, or excuse me, EE -E or GGEA. Um, Evil Geniuses, I think it's certainly possible. I mean, we have not really seen the full potential that this roster can bring us, I think. it's It's been a constant disappointment with them. Um, but what a way to, to kind of come back it would be if, if this team comes out and, you know, gets a, a top 10 uh, T12, T8, something like that at this event and basically secures their spot for Pro League. Uh, that would be pretty crazy um, as far as storylines is concerned. But as far as like bold predictions, I don't think that's too bold of a prediction uh, just from the sense that I think they certainly can do it. And I think everyone believes that they can do it. Uh, so we'll see what happens, of course. And um, I'm very excited for CWL NOLA, of course. It's a couple days away now. I think we're about a week away. And... Uh, I mean, yeah, the storylines are going to be great. The The open bracket matches will be just as important as ever. And, and yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of teams that are, you know, trying to win the event. I mean, obviously, Optic needs to come back and win the event. Uh, they need to kind of show that they are the best team in the game and that TK and Splice aren't better than them. Um, and then, you know, obviously, for teams like Echo Fox and, and E6 and Ground Zero, it's, it's all about uh, making sure you secure your spot for Pro League. And so I'm very excited again for CWL NOLA and I hope you all are too. Uh, make sure you leave a like and subscribe on the video if you liked it. Uh, tweet at CODGamePedia your predictions or leave them in the comments below. I'll try to go through and talk to some of you guys and, and keep 
socializing and keep updated on all your predictions. And um, I hope you all have a good day, and we'll see you at CWL NOLA in a couple of days.